So we now bring in uh, Tom Ashin, and both Tom and I in different parts of our careers uh, covered Syracuse lacrosse uh, outside of just the lacrosse world, but Syracuse lacrosse in particular throughout different yeah. uh, schools and, and jobs. And so, Tom, you, you've got a unique perspective as well about this. With Syracuse lacrosse, Gary Gate and Dave Petromala joining forces, what does that make you think of? Mm, I, I think it. It's unprecedented. I think that's the first word that comes to mind of, of having. And, and of course, I mean, I'll be honest, I was a little young back when they <laughs> played against each other. Yeah. But you read the stories, you, you hear about it so often. And just to hear two legends teaming up on the same staff. And I think the first thing I think of, of course, is this has never really happened before. Yeah. And I don't know when, maybe in sports you can compare it to, but also think of recruiting at the same time. I mean, whatever kind of recruiter you are, whatever kind of kid you are. And I don't know, I guess. I think about the recruiting aspect and you hear these names. Do those names still matter as much as they used to to maybe some young kids that are 18, 19 years old? That's another layer here. And I'm sure the parents know and whatnot. But is that still a big factor here? I think it has to be because yeah. I, if you have and because it becomes not even the YouTube generation, because there's a lot. Of, you can find Gary Gate and Dave Petromal stuff on YouTube, but you got to dig. Yeah. pretty far to, to find stuff so there's like a lore about their playing that stands out even more because it's all passed down through stories so i think there's part of it you, you can't you don't even look at the videos to see it you just hear people talk about their play and it and it really uh stands out to you but i mean to me this is like michael jordan and name another great player of that generation joining forces but not only that but both guys having then coach somewhere else mm. and it's they've done it's not like you have to question whether they can coach because we know both can coach at different levels and whether it's men's women's whatever they have both achieved great things yeah. in their coaching careers as well and now joining forces in the same place i mean if, if you are a recruit and gary gate and dave petromala walk into your living room i mean don't you go where do i sign <laughs> yeah and, and, and I think what's interesting about them is their personalities are different enough yes. and, and that I think it might really help balance that program out a lot. We heard Gary Gates so often in his opening press conference talk about restoring some flair into practice and maybe getting some of that more fun back in involved. And then you, you hear about Coach Petro, and he's still the same guy. I mean, I've, we talk about our experience with Syracuse. I mean, I know I've talked to Coach Petro several times since after he stepped away from yeah. Johns Hopkins, and he is – going to be very driven in this job there's a hunger yeah he is he I, I think that that to me is what's going to stick out the most about all this is what he's going to do for the defensive side of the ball there at Syracuse and and sort of turn them and and make them a little bit more cohesive on that side and like you said a little bit more hungry and be that team in the ACC that teams are a little more fearful with all these great offenses that have developed I mean, Chris Gray's coming back from North yep. Carolina you got all the guys for Virginia that are going to be back Duke. to do Duke on a yearly basis and, yeah and I think that, you know, you got Kevin Ald in Notre Dame as well. I, th I think that that's maybe the most important part of this is the defensive side for Syracuse could be what separates them in all of that. You're going to need a good defense yeah. to go, or you're going to have to score 25 goals. Right. Which Gary Gates Syracuse teams <laughs> when he was playing just about did yeah. throughout his career. I think the thing that stood out to me about Gary Gate in his introductory press conference, the one thing that he hit on was the fact that he wanted to restore some of the creativity yeah. and the excitement. And I think... You look at Syracuse teams over the last couple of years. It's not to say they haven't had great offensive talent and, and great, but have they had the guy that has transcended the sport or transcended uh, going, going no. constantly high? I mean, we've seen Chris Gray do it. We've seen uh, Michael Sowers do it. We've seen guys who have been these highlight machines, Pat Spencer. But Syracuse hasn't had one of those guys. No. And I think that is one of the things missing with the program is not only just the hype of the team, because we've seen that over the last couple of years. Can they get back to championship weekend? Can they get the recruit and have the guy that is encouraged over the course of his four years to do the stuff that maybe he isn't fundamentally sound, but the stuff that's going to put the sport on another level and get... 10,000 people to want to go to a game at the Carrier Dome because they want to see these three guys play at the attack spot. I think that if you're a Syracuse fan, that is the number one thing that you should be excited about Gary Gate because he's talking about that and what he's done with the women's game and wanting to be part of growing that version of the sport and encouraging players to do stuff that maybe is a little out of the ordinary, maybe not completely fundamentally sound, but it's exciting and energizes the crowd. 
If he brings that to, back to the men's game as well at Syracuse, I think that should excite every Syracuse fan and fans of college lacrosse in general. I think the answer to that comes in the form of a recruit originally gotten by John Desco and his staff and Joey Spelina. Yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of having, I don't know if they have that guy that's going to be on the roster not next right. season. No, I, don't know. I think um, obviously Hiltz had such a great freshman yeah. year, but great he's not as flashy. He's more of a, I'm going to go get the job done and, and, and you know, shoot as hard as I can and, and be very impressive in that aspect. But I think that once Joey Spelina steps on campus, that is when things are going to change. And I don't know if you're going to see it in the first year because there's going to be, I mean, there's a learning curve here. Yeah. You know, the last time Gary Gate coached, I think it was the Hamilton Nationals in like 2011 um, on the men's side. And of course, he coached the NLL before that. Yeah. And of course, there's a transition between the women and the men. I mean, there's no question about that. He established a great culture, of course, with Syracuse and the women's side. But when it comes to techniques and philosophies, and of course, he's got Pat March still there. Yes. Another important aspect of the staff that's staying. Yeah, 100 percent. It's going to be an exciting time, uh, I think, for Syracuse lacrosse. And you bring two legends of the sport together. Uh, I think people's heads exploded when they saw Dave Petromala tweeting orange emojis. But uh, yeah, I mean, who would have thought? I mean, I mean, we talked about like, oh, Petro, maybe in the future or whatever. Like he wanted to get back in. We're not sure. And then a uh, Hopkins, you know, Johns Hopkins and Dave yeah, Petromala. I mean, uh, legend at this. Hopkins going to Syracuse. Wow. 2021. It's a wild ride.